Okay, perfect. That was very quick. Perfect. The slides take a, load, a moment to load. That is helpful, Anil. Thank you. Okay, let's start this by being interactive. Can I just get, uh, can I just get um, on the chat where people are logging in from? I'd love to see different locations that people are logging in from. Okay, so we got a lot of people from Mumbai, Hyderabad, Gurgaon, Ajmer, mm -hmm. Coimbatore. This is amazing. You know, I was just, my son is 13 years old and I was just telling him how lucky we are that we've all gone through COVID. Um, in a certain sense, there's a lot of tough things. At the same time, it's opened our eyes up and it's so lovely that we can be with someone from Tirupur, Pune, Bangalore, Vadodara, uh, Cochin, all at the same time. Uh, something that would not have been possible much earlier. Ludhiana, Nagpur, excellent. Okay, so let me start my uh, presentation. And I guess it takes a few seconds for the screen to load. Okay, so my topic today is about building a brand. You know, I just want to be clear that I am a student like all of you. Uh, some of you may have seen that my background was really in investment banking, private equity. So what is an investment banker and private equity guy trying to do? Uh, building a brand. And, and so today I thought we'll do a couple of things. First, um, first I'll let you get to know me through a few questions. Hopefully I'll get to know you also. The second, this is a chat. It's not a presentation. I want this to be interactive. When I went to business school at Harvard, I learned a whole new way of learning, which is the Socratic method of dialogue questions and always questions are more important than the answers. So I'd love you to ask me a lot of questions and you can learn from each other. Um, just give me a second because I see some people are putting something on a chat. I'll have to uh, switch it around. Um, uh, okay, let me just try something here. And, and most important, the focus of the presentation today is elements of brand building. But given I'm a student, I don't like to, to really teach. I'd love to facilitate a discussion. I only have my experience building on Nicobar. And so a lot of my examples are what we've done at Nicobar. It is not the only way. It may not be the right way. But I think by seeing some things we've done, maybe you will get some lessons through it. And so I will... The third section will go through each of these things on what I believe you're looking for. Uh, what are the most elements of most important elements of building a brand? I will elaborate on all of this in the end, so you don't need to take notes right now. Uh, but this is what Nicobar has done well. We started with a unique product, a design signature. There are things we do to be a listening organization, to staying close to the consumer. For us, there is a lot of clarity of what success is, and it is not just revenue or profit. We have brought a coaching mentality, uh, always searching for talent and a mentorial attitude. We live the brand. The vocabulary you use when building a brand is very important. And always building brand assets. And I'll talk about the pop-ups we've done, the journal we've done, which is content, the experiences. We're obsessed with the moon. We have something called nicotides. So that's what I will end with. And each of these, I will have some details for you. But you know, to me, um, I'm just gonna stop here for a second to make it a little interactive to hear from you. I'd like you to put in your chat, what do you believe uh, a brand is? What is to you a brand? Okay, someone says it's vision. What else is a brand? If I asked you what is a brand, it's a philosophy for doing things, interesting. It's a unique identity, absolutely. It's a promise. A brand is about the emotions of that. A brand
somebody muted me and I could not unmute, but I'm now on unmute. Um, such lovely answers by all of you. A brand is a philosophy for doing things, says Panchami. Uh, it is about a unique identity. It is a promise. It is the emotions you carry, a critical idea. It's a perception or impression. It's something that sets you apart. It's a persona. It's something, a brand is a solution to a problem. It's a story with emotions. These are lovely answers. Uh, a brand is recall value. Okay. You know, to me, think of a brand as a person with its own unique personality. Uh, Rahul says it's an identity that defines the quality of the product and service to customers. So, so when you think about Nicobar, for those of you who know, if I tell you Nicobar is a personality, uh, what kind of words come to mind? Um, to describe, yes, minimal, a vacation vibe. Sandeep, can you say why you say vacation? It represents modern, it represents beach, calm, soothing, fun and modern, island, free spirited, interesting hipster, modern cups, Indian and quirky, relaxed, premium, responsible, conscious choices. My gosh, I love you. This is fantastic. I wish the internet were working better and we could interact with each other on voice also. But I'd, I'd love to I'd love to call on Tanvi. If you can unmute Tanvi. Uh, and Tanvi, you said, uh, I forgot it's gone so quickly, but you said something about easy Indian. What do you mean? Let me try if this works. It'll make it a lot more fun. Urmila Mascara says Indian heritage. Can anyone unmute and, and, and want to share through the voice? Let me see if that works. You can put on the uh, chat that you are unmuting and then share. Laid back. Indian aesthetics in a contemporary form. For me, it feels Sri Lankan. Shalini, why do you say Sri Lankan? What is Sri Lankan to you? Shalini, can you add in the chat again? What is Sri Lankan to you? If I say describe brand Sri Lanka. Gaul, that's why. Okay, great. Um, I'll go back to my slides over here. Um, and so to understand Nicobar, I think it's important to sometimes understand any brand. It's important to understand the founder's journeys because invariably the brand comes out of a very personal journey and what matters to the founding team. So if you look at this, you know, this is me. I grew up in the Navy. Uh, we moved around between Delhi, Bombay, Cochin and Baizag. Uh, at age 18, I go off to America to study at Boston University. Um, and while I was there, uh, you know, at that time, room and board tuition was $20,000 per year, which was a lot for a naval officer. I got half a scholarship, but my parents still had to come up with $10,000 per year for me for four years. And I carried a guilt. I worked as a security guard while at college. I worked as a waiter. I worked as a bicycle courier. Even though I studied computer science, I took classes in art history, philosophy. And I think that's really important to have a diverse education. Uh, and I say this because now in retrospect, you know, I have great respect for everybody on the shop floor, everybody in the warehouse, everybody doing customer care. And I think it is because of my own experiences as a waiter, as a security guard. And today when we build Nicobar, we say everyone is equal. It's very important, it's very easy when you build a brand to elevate the role of the designer. Um, and the designers are very important, but equally important is, you know, translating that beautiful design experience and story onto the shop floor. So how the retail person whom we call brand ambassadors, and I'll talk about the importance of vocabulary, how they tell that story. You know, when you order a package, it's really important how much care the warehouse person will take to package that. 
we send packages from our shop floor. So it's very important. When you call with a problem, the product can be the greatest, but if you have a bad experience on customer care, you're going to destroy the brand. And so I talk about connecting the dots because my experience of respecting everybody probably came out of my growing up in the Navy, probably came out of working in these different roles. I went off to Harvard. I studied my MBA. And then I was very lucky that I was at Goldman Sachs, uh, which was a premier investment bank back in the 90s. And I learned three things. I learned the importance of culture. I learned the spirit of entrepreneurship because I worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and I always enjoyed the entrepreneurs more than I did the bankers. And Goldman Sachs had a philosophy saying they were long-term greedy versus short-term greedy, which is they always thought about the long-term. And that really made a difference to me. After being away for 18 years, I come back to India and... Uh, and I meet my wife, Simran Lal, whose mother started Good Earth. Um, and, and Simran has been my most important influence in my life. And, and today, I believe a lot more in emotional intelligence than in, in, than in IQ. Uh, I found my purpose, which I call inspiring India to modernize without necessarily westernizing. And I'm so... You know, I just feel India has such a lovely history, tradition, culture. And yet we're not able to interpret in a way that is sometimes relevant to how we live our lives today. And yet all the wisdom sits there. So one of the classes I am doing is a three-year course in Vedanta. It's a three-year online course. I wake up every morning and, and I study for an hour with Simran online between 5.30 and 6.30. Uh, and I put down over here uh, a quote from Michael Jordan because everything I've learned, I've learned through sports. Michael Jordan, being the greatest player in, in basketball, talks about how many times he's missed game-winning shots, how many times he's lost. And the reason he succeeds is because he's willing to fail over and over and over again. And I think that's very important. Whenever you do something, especially brand building, there's a lot of experimentation. Some things will work, some things will not. You have to be open to experimentation and evolving like an organic forest, not a manicured garden. Um, and finally, I started meditating about nine years ago and uh, uh, with Sadhguru. And that's when I found this purpose around, in that silence, I found my purpose around really inspiring India to modernize without necessarily westernizing. And, and I would say in India, when I came back after 18 years, which was about 14 years ago, I found three things happened to me. One, I didn't find enough organizations over here I was working in private equity with General Atlantic, but I didn't find enough organizations that, where I felt I was passionate about the culture. So I really wanted to create my own culture. One where you're able to find holistic personal and professional growth. That's point one. Point two, I married into the Lal family who also run, in addition to Good Earth, Royal Enfield Motorcycles, uh, Aisha Trucks and Buses. And I found an amazing family with amazing integrity who thought long-term and combined family values with a professional orientation. And I thought that combination is very powerful. And third, I found my purpose around in So Nicobar actually came out of this desire to one, create a culture, you know, where design talent is truly harnessed. You know, why are we a company, country only of manufacturing and not great design and great brands? Uh, and so that became my purpose. How do we create something from India that stood on its own. And I'll talk about that next. And also a culture which was really rooted in family values and yet with some professionalism. And so I'm gonna talk about Nicobar in two minutes and then go to brand building. But before I do that, I'm gonna just take a pause, look at the chat over here. Does anyone want to know uh, anything about my background before I get into brand building? Okay, Tanvi asks, what age did I find my purpose in life? Probably in my 40s. Uh, and, uh, and it came through reflection. It came through silence. Um, and to, and the, the good question from Priyashmita, what's the difference between modernization and westernization according to you? To me, you know, westernization is what is happening in the West, which is traditionally Europe and uh, and, and, and the US. Modernization is what is relevant to the whole world. 
uh, and living in today's uh, per, today's world. Uh, we will talk about marrying purpose with pro- purpose, uh, purpose with profits. Uh, the course on Vedanta that I mentioned is from the Vedanta Ac- Academy. It's by Swami Parthasarthi. Uh, Harshit wants to know what Nicobar is. Uh, a little bit more about my Harvard journey. We'll come to that. I do want to focus on brand building. Um, thank you, Shalini. I believe you shop at Nicobar and Good Earth a lot. Uh, and I and you know Ur- Urmila, I'm glad. I do feel like you know, and I'd encourage all you students to really think about creating brands that are rooted in India because I think that is the time has now come. And uh, and Urmila says that post the pandemic, I love the way we have started looking at Indian brands and started appreciating them. Uh, and private equity players have been creating great brands. Absolutely. You know, private equity is an integral part of brand building also. Um, uh, you know, uh, Shubha, maybe I can answer that in the end uh, because I do want to get to brand building. What is the message that you think you should have known at age of 30? Uh, maybe I'll answer it right now. Uh, and it's a philosophical answer, but I'm with my son here. He just turned 13. Uh, He missed online school a couple of days because we were in the Maldives. And I said, I was telling him, son, uh, Raghav, you know, school is really important. Learning is really important. That is what has kept me going. And I think the most important thing is curiosity and learning. Um, And and he looked at me and he said, dad, more important than school is knowing yourself. And, And there's another course I'm doing with Google. It's called Search Inside Yourself. And it is about going within and understanding yourself. So if there's something I would have explored more is how does one realize truly and accept truly who they are? Uh, okay, there are a lot of questions over here. Uh, keep them, I'll keep, I'll, I wanna get to brand building and then I'll come back to some of this, yeah. Um, before I do that, just because I can't hear you guys, is this format working? Are you able to hear clearly? Are the topics relevant? Okay, great. Wonderful. Uh, Okay, and now, so what I'm gonna do is in five minutes, I'm gonna just tell everybody who Nicobar is for those who don't know. And then we're going to get into what I think is the essentials of brand building. You know, we talked about in brand, one of the most important things is clarity. Why do you exist? And Nicobar exists because we want to create a modern Indian way of living, dressing, and importantly, looking at the world. You know, when we came up with the words looking at the world, I went into raptures because I would say, you know, I've lived in New York, London. And if you asked me 30 years ago, when I had to show up for a party in New York or London, I would always wear my full bandgala. And that was what it meant to be Indian. Today, I can easily pair, you know, a bandgala top uh, with a pair of jeans. I might wear the bandgala without all the buttons um, uh, tied up. You know, so Indian is not just about the physical, it's about your approach. It's about your view of the world, which is why I study a lot about what being Indian really means. And I want to just share a very important thing. When Simran and I were starting the brand, you know, we were in, I would say, an existential angst. We said the world doesn't need more product. So why are we actually creating a brand that is going to encourage more consumption? And and we really struggled with this. Finally, what we realized is absolutely the world needs less product, not more product. At the same time, we need product that is made in a certain way, that is made responsibly that is made with organic materials, that is made with natural materials. And brands need to be built that in, that encourage this lifestyle. So I like to say that while on the surface we sell products, you know, we're really trying to sell a way of life, uh, of consuming mindfully, while helping India create a clear, desi- distinct design signature. So just like IKEA to me represents Sweden, Muji represents Japan, And someone mentioned this, that Nicobar reminds them of Sri Lanka. To me, Sri Lanka is all Jeffrey Bhava. Uh, So they have a very strong design signature. But unfortunately, where is India's tropical modern design language? And that's the movement that I hope all of you, it's not one brand that creates it. It's a movement. 
and that's why Sri Lanka I use as an example because it just stands for a certain aesthetic, and I hope a lot more of you will will follow this dream of creating a modern design language. So what we do is, if you look at this, you know, we'll take the trousers over here are our weekend trousers, one of our best sellers, but they were inspired by the dhoti. You know, you've seen Madras checks over there. We'll take chanderi from saris and use it to make dresses. So that's how we create something that reflects India, yet is global in appeal, because I always wanted to design things where, you know, like these uh, products which we designed in conjunction with uh, master chef Gary Megan. Uh, it's a spice box made in brass and wood. Um, and then the kulhar, inspired from the railway station, but encouraging versatility of product. Um, can be used as pencil cases. You know, they can be used for espresso in, uh, in Italy. They can be used for sake in Japan. And that's why I talk about, uh, and so we have three product categories. And I'll now move into brand building. Uh, but Nicobar is a lifestyle brand on the surface. But actually, if you go deeper, we really want to be a group of people who are absolutely crazy about design and digital. And when you dig deeper, actually, we're trying to be a conscious learning organization. And so when you're thinking about brand building, you know, who, what are you doing? You can say, I'm building shoes. I'm creating shoes. That's not very profound, right? But if you're creating a way of walking where you're more in touch with the earth, now that starts making a little more deep purpose. And, uh, and so that's why I would just encourage you beyond thinking of what the surface level is when you're building a brand to really go deep down into seeing how are you trying to make the world a better place? How are you trying to do something uh, that has some meaning associated with it? And so I'm going to go into this. Uh, I'll, I'll just pause over there. And now we're going to go into the main section on brand building. Uh, but before we do that, I'm coming back to the chat. Um, and, and any questions you have around Nicobar or any questions that, that prompted that I can answer in the next question. Uh, and maybe I will ask you now, everybody to put down two of their favorite brands that they admire. Yeah. Good Earth, Fab India, Perot, Nike, Apple. You know, to make this more meaningful, let me ask you all to again do that, but put down why, right? So just put down, and I think this is important. I'm going to give you all three minutes. So I'm not going to speak. I'm, I'm going to just watch the put down why. Okay, someone says Chumbak because of a unique style and design. Tesla because of eco-friendly and the economics. Apple, because of design and use. Nike feels sporty. March, T, amazing storytelling. Lovely, Ikaya and Banaras helping the weavers to reach heights. Yeah, it's a deeper purpose. Muji, advocating a lifestyle of minimalism and mindfulness. Summer House, for their honesty and commitment towards. You know, as you look at this, uh, uh, Tarun, you say label life. I want to know the reason. Uh, Rahul says Volvo, known for safety. And as you look at this ancestry store, because they are rooted in culture and tradition, you can see all these are speaking to something in you. Maybe Alankara is someone who is rooted in culture and tradition. Good earth, because it feels like home. Urmila loves good earth and, fav uh, and, uh, and fab India because she loves being Indian. Shopify, it's an elegant way of communication. Muji, for the philosophy and ethos of simplicity. And you can see what you're all resonating with is the purpose of the brand. Afreen, I bet in her life, she finds modernity and Indian culture rich and fascinating, which is why she resonates with raw mango. Amea, is probably loves minimalism as a philosophy. There we go. Mamta says, Fab India reflects her. It's earthy yet trendy. Farhan has let Red Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Yeah, uh, I've got 99 messages over here. Lovely. So, you know, the, the takeaway here as point one in brand building is 
what in the brand is going to connect with someone else at an emotional level, right? A brand ultimately reflects someone else. I buy Nike because I think I'm an athlete in my daily life. I buy Apple because I like having design in everyday living. I buy Nicobar because I think it makes me more mindful in my consumption. Um, great. Uh, lovely. Um, okay. Um, someone says I'm not audible. Am I audible? If someone can just respond. Okay. Okay. My, uh, D2C, uh, someone asked what D2C is. Thank you. Uh, someone asked what D2C is. Uh, it is direct to consumer. So in the old world, Nicobar would produce a product and then we'd go to a third party. Like uh, in India, there are very few who really do it at the level we could, uh, like a shopper stop or um, I don't know, you know, all these, there are no places that Nicobar could do the distribution, but typically you'd go to a third party who would sell your product. D2C are brands who sell directly to consumers. Okay, I'm going back to now my brand. Okay. So here are some things, you know, I think the first thing is you start with a unique product and a design signature. I would say, you know, that's the thing that we're most proud of at Nicobar is when you see something Nicobar, some people say that's very Nicobar, even when it is not. And that is a compliment to us uh, in the sense that now we have a unique design signature. You know, our extended identity is around nature. We are absolutely obsessed with stars, stripes, moon, ocean, sea, wildlife, palms. Uh, so wherever you go, you will see. You can even see we have hung little plants in this pop-up, right? Stripes is a great part of us. Even you can see inside this kurta, there's some elements of nature just on the collar. So it's not even to show others, it's for ourselves. And so that's the first thing I'd ask you to do is really think about what is the uniqueness in your design signature? What is the uniqueness in your visual library? And, uh, and, and here are some, you know, these are just customers. Like you said, Nicobar is now known for our fabrics. Nicobar is known for the global appeal. Nicobar is known for gifting. Um, so the second thing is what I call a listening organization. Every day when we started Nicobar, I used to write to five customers and just ask them what they thought of, of the product. I used to spend time in the stores and I cannot recommend that more than anything else. If you're going to build a brand, please find a way to remain connected to your customers. You learn a lot from that and that should help you drive the agenda. And just because someone says they want a brown kurta doesn't mean you make a brown kurta. But suppose that person said, I want a brown kurta for my father. What you're picking up over there in that conversation is people need help with gifting. I think it's tougher to find a gift than to buy something for yourself. And therefore I would highly encourage, I think there's a big market for people to solve the problem of making gifting beautiful, making gifting personal. So when you hear something, don't interpret it literally, but try and see what is the need. So he was looking for a brown kurta. That was a need. But what he was really looking for is a gift for his father. And he didn't say that, right? He said, I'm looking for a brown kurta for my father. So this is, you know, these are quotes that on our, we have a chat uh, with all our retail team members. They share the revenue, walk-ins, et cetera, for the day. But I ask them to share customer stories. So if you're going to be a listening organization, you've got to create a ritual around listening. So on our WhatsApp, we hear about when we let a customer down. We hear about when we looked after customers and what delight customers caused. You know, uh, uh, just the other day, a customer sent sweets to our warehouse. That's how amazing some people out there are. And they said, I know your team in the warehouse is working hard 
And here is a box of sweets from me to thank them in the warehouse. You know, they send cake to our retail team. You know, and that's what, I don't want Nicobar to be a brand that we created. I want Nicobar to be a brand that we co-created. So my second lesson for you guys to consider is how can you be a combination of what I call inner belief, which is expressing yourself at the same time, being tuned into the customer and listening to the customer. The third I talk about is clarity of success beyond financials. So you will always get tempted to make purpose and uh, to make profits. And I think it's absolutely needed. But we are very clear that in addition to that, why are we trying to make money? We're trying to make money so that we can use the money to shape culture, this culture of mindfulness. You know, we are trying to make the money so we can con contribute to a contemporary design language. Nicobar taps, this was Harper's. Nicobar taps into this very idea and brings the world home and equally India to the world. Pieces that fit into your wardrobe and live anywhere in the world. You know, we want Indian design to glow global. The third is giving back to society. Even when we weren't making money, the first thing we did is a collaboration with World Wildlife Fund for the animals of the Nicobar Islands. Um, we've done things for saving the Asian elephant. Right now, when you go on our site, we encourage you to plant trees. So give a gift of trees. Uh, and I think it's less than 100 rupees per tree, but just planting trees on behalf of someone else. And that notion has kept us anchored. And finally, we want anybody who comes to Nicobar to feel like they have grown holistically, personally, and professionally. So really visualizing what success is uh, as you build the brand beyond numbers is important. The fourth is people. I know a lot of you are talented. I sometimes say, you know, I'm the least talented at Nicobar, but I know myself and I have surrounded myself with an amazing team. And, and brands are built not by an individual, but by talented people. I'm a big sports fan and, and, and as a coach, even when you're a coach of a Premier League team like Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, you spend 30% of your time still finding talent and you've got the greatest people in your team already. You've got the greatest people working for you and yet you're spending time looking for, for new people. And you spend a lot of your time on building culture. So that was my model. You know, I spent 250 meetings to find the first nine people to join the Nicobar journey. And I would encourage you all, you know, right from now, keep a list of people you meet, you admire, whether you want them to join your team, whether they want them to be an, uh, an advisor, but that is a critical part of building a brand. You cannot do it with one person. Fifth, living the brand through the team. You know, we talk about in our interviews, we try and see whether people who are joining us are mindful, whether they believe in sustainability. You've got to get a team that really believes in the purpose. Our best performing posts on Instagram are always where we use our own people. Sonal Tyagi over here gets the highest uh, 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 responses, but we do it all the time. You know, this is how we sometimes look at Nicobar. Uh, I'll show you later our meetings, but we live the brand. And I think that's really important is nothing else the one advice is your team should live the brand. I'm going to go through two more and then open it up to questions. But the vocabulary is very important. So we don't call ourselves, we don't call Nicobar a company. We don't call our stores stores. We don't call them offices. We try and use studio uh, instead of company. We try and use island instead of store. We, try, we have a lovely uh, farmhouse, which is where we have our our, uh, our working spaces. We call it the tree house, not the office. This is a scene from our everyday life. We didn't Photoshop this. We didn't, it was just, this is what living the brand is. These are, this is our design team at work. You know, this is another meeting happening at Nicobar where we did an Airbnb collaboration, but our spaces are done up like this. So it's about living the brand. We call our customers guests. 
because we want to welcome them like in an indian home you welcome a guest we don't want people to sell in the store we want them to inspire we don't call them sales people we call them brand ambassadors because really knowing and living the brand is what is most important that's a look at one of our stores and then finally i'm just going to go back the last thing i'm going to talk about is you know not everything can be measured but always think about creating additional brand assets right so what are you doing that is memorable beyond the product itself and so these are some things that we did right at the beginning we launched nico journal uh, which is where we talked about our philosophy we 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 showcased a hundred young talented people who were doing things which we felt were in the same way of mindful living um rooted in design you know seema sondhi's yoga studio sara edwards at copper and cloves um uh, we had blue tokai coffee um bare necessities for sustainable living we launched nico radio uh, which is our playlist and i'm thinking about doing a podcast to share my philosophy again it will be available on nico radio we are obsessed with nico uh, the moon so every new moon and full moon we try and do something special very soon we'll be launching a on nico tides a contest for all young designers uh, to a contest where if you win nikoba will work with you in bringing a product to life niko kara is our cafe niko core is our products that are always there this is our team putting up a pop up niko journal which i just talked about um and 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 then we used our store so this is our bangalore store we use it for a yoga brunch we clear out the racks in the morning and again it's just to introduce people to a way of living and we we love collaborating so these are some of the collaborations we've done we're doing something more with bira we just have one going on right now with asian paints where we code this where we designed wallpapers for them and so i just want to wrap up with this slide on on brand building and i hope and and i'm going to ask you in the chat which of these resonates with you the most starting with a unique product so please think of it becoming a listening organization having clarity of success beyond financials you know building a team and and viewing yourself as a coach living the brand and the importance of vocabulary and finally building brand assets you know decisions that are sometimes not measurable so with that i'm just going to stop the formal part of the presentation here um and i'd love everybody i'm going to take Yeah, I want to know from you what resonated for you. What is something new you learned? Uh, inviting customers as guests, building team, and working as a coach. Ormela says everyone is important. Yes, everyone is important. Living the brand, experiences and collaboration, pop ups. I'm glad someone talked about the importance of vocabulary. Many people did. Customers as guests, non measurable brand assets. Team should live the brand. Observe. I love by the way I must say thank you you guys are a phenomenal audience there's almost 600 of you over here before covid we would never have had a time to do this design importance out of the box culture collaborations and now maybe we can afrain listening organization yeah it is now i think uh, it's about 12 o'clock so we've been going for about an hour keeping a list of people you think are talented Now there are a lot of questions over here, um, and uh, and I really want to thank all of you for being so involved. I really wish I could hear you. It would make this so much more lively. Uh, don't sell influence. And one thing I want to learn, which is, I hope you all are learning from your colleagues over here. uh and you can see some of the insights people are, are sharing are very valuable yeah and i'll start taking questions um thank you uh, somebody at least is enjoying the session afreen is enjoying the session okay now the comments are going very fast um and so uh i need to i need to know how, okay i'll start picking uh, ria or anyone do you want to start asking me questions do you want yeah. me to take questions should we take a yeah, two minute sure. break so we can i think take few questions from the chat box and um, um rahul you're not able to hear us right 
No, I'm now hearing you absolutely clearly. It was beautiful. You're able to hear me? Uh, who was that? Ria? It's me, Ria. Yeah. I can hear you absolutely clearly. It's fantastic. Okay. Then it's really good. Then uh, I'll just directly ask the questions. We will uh, just... And, I, and, I, and I'm wondering if you can unmute because it'd be lovely to hear the question directly sometimes from the guest also. So I yeah, think sure. everybody, you know, everybody has... Um, I think if you go into participants, there's a feature to raise your hand. And, and maybe you can use that to raise your hand and ask a question. Can we try that? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, we have few people who have. Okay. You, Ria, you can moderate and you let me know what you'd like me to do. Okay. Uh, hi. Hi, Ankita. Yeah, so I just would like to know how do you make sustainable fashion more affordable because it's very costly. You know, look, uh, again, I, I think it is. It is, I uh, see there are, uh, let me, um, uh, okay. So if you can visualize everybody, uh, three, almost a stacked bar. At the bottom is the cost. Then there is the price. And then right above price is what I call perceived value. Yeah, so you've got cost, price, and perceived value. Can someone put in the chat, what is the difference between price minus cost? What is that? What is, what is perfect, Simra, okay, perfect. Profit and margin, absolutely, perfect. Look at you guys, amazing, okay. So now when you build the brand, what is the purpose of the brand? Is the brand meant to reduce cost, increase price, increase perceived value? What do you think a good brand does? All three, okay. Increase perceived value, says Sandeep. There we go. Very interesting, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, okay, now, okay, lovely. So, you know, there are brands that just work on reducing cost. But if you're in that game, you're a Walmart, you're an Amazon, and you have to have deep pockets and usually one or two people win as the lowest cost in the industry. What most brands do is work on increasing perceived value. And, and, and I think you all, I'm very amazed and proud that so many of you have talked about that. And so how does this relate to, Ankita, how does this relate to your question on sustainability? Does it relate that example that I just used? I'm gonna answer it more directly now, but I'm wondering whether you've seen the answer. Ankita, can you hear me? Yeah, Ankita, can you, oh, you cannot unmute. Can someone un unmute Ankita? Hello, yeah, I understood your example. Yeah, so basically what I was trying to say there is, you know, look, it is true. I think for the future sustainable products, there will always be cheaper alternatives to sustainable products. That is the reality. I think we owe it to be clear, creative, to work on, on, on reducing cost. And we absolutely do, you know, on our third birthday, we decided to go plastic free and we did it 85% plastic free right now. Um, you know, uh, and it's very tough to do home packaging, especially for e-commerce with the way things are handled in this country, but we did it and we took a little extra cost, but I think our customers also appreciate us for us, for it, you know, so for example, we offer gifting, but we charge 50 rupees for the gift wrap, you know, so people know that they're paying for it. Um, so we absolutely will work on keeping on reducing costs, right? We're always looking out for organic materials with better prices, better costs. But the real thing with sustainability is to work on the perceived value, to be able to let everybody see the impact of buying 10 clothes a year versus buying three has. And I think that is, in my view, it's really about 
the perceived value, you know, seeing the plastic end up in the oceans, you know, seeing the amount of waste that we all are creating. Uh, and that will nudge us towards a more sustainable life. And I think COVID really nature's way of reminding us that we need to live much more in sync with the environment. So, you know, that's my view, Ankita. I hope that helps. It's, it is about increasing perceived value much more than just reducing costs. Yeah, Ria, you want to take the next question? Yeah, sure. So we have another question from, I guess, Swati. Yeah. Oh, uh, just a minute. So, hello, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hi, Swati. Hi, Swati. Swati, tell us, before you ask your question, tell us where are you calling from and tell us one brand you admire. Uh, I uh, At the moment, I love Good Earth because uh, I've just started a uh, small label called Rohati. And uh, uh, it is basically on handprint. And I am using both the media like uh, natural with, um, I mean, the, I'm using the fiber, I, uh, viscose, uh, and uh, amalgamating it with the rayon uh, or maybe any yeah. other nylon okay. thread. But okay. I... What's your question? Yes, but I don't want to do that. I have to do that just for the reason I love sustainable products, but the market is too, I mean, it's very challenging. Uh, I don't know how to survive. So uh, because I've just started a label, uh, it is, you know, a lot of money that is uh, invested and there is no market uh, or maybe like the cost of production is getting too high because um, making such products uh, like the clothes, the fabric we source is definitely going to be higher. Like if you use Kala cotton, de definitely it's going to be higher than the lo local production. How can we, how can we reduce that? Sorry, I'm, just, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to know what is your question? How can we reduce the cost and how can we make the product, which is, uh, I want to work on sustainable ground. How can we uh, reach to the clients uh, who wants our products? I, I have clients, but they don't want to buy the product at that cost. So how can I, how can we reach at the midway somewhere so that we don't make losses, but the clients who love the product can buy them, sir? Look, I have, I have bad news for you. Uh, you know, I believe that in building a brand, you have to be prepared to go for three to five years of losses. Uh, and, and, and you need, it's very difficult. I don't know of brands that are profitable within year one, right? Um, you may need a services business to fund it, uh, or you may need investors. Uh, yes, sir. And, and so, you know, it's not easy starting a brand. I mean, even with Nicobar, and we've been so lucky, you know, we had to take losses for four years. Uh, and sir, how can we bear it? I don't have that big fund. That's so where it comes to finding it. That's why I said it takes a team. You know, you have to find someone who believes in your mission, who believes in your vision, who you can partner with. Um, okay. uh, and that is absolutely needed. Uh, you know, my own route was I decided to work in banking. I had had some savings. I decided to use some of my savings to do this. Um, so everybody finds their own route. Um, it is not, you know, no business is profitable. Very few businesses are profitable from day one. And especially if you're building a sustainable business, you're choosing a harder route. Yes, sir. Yeah. But okay. the only thing is right now I'm compromising, which I don't want to. So will that work like gradually or I have to completely cut off what I'm thinking and start uh, doing what exactly I want? Look, we, we, you know, I can tell you, I do not believe uh, there's anything called sustainable. I think it is all a journey. I think we okay. all have to understand that it will keep getting better, but we have to start the journey with one small step. So in that sense, I'm not a purist. I think being mindful, being aware of the kind of choices you're making and why you're making them, everybody has their restrictions. And I don't think it's good to judge anybody, right? but I think the mindset, are we trying our best? Uh, is important. All right, yeah. sir. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Who's who's next on the question? Tanvi, you have a question. 
or Ria's moderator. Ria? Uh, yeah, I think Ruchi wants to go next. Ruchi Gaur. Thanks, Ria. Hi, Raul. This is Ruchi Gaur. I am joining from uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, but I have worked with uh, uh, Swiggy, Amazon, and a couple of e-commerce organizations in the past, and I'm starting something of my own. So the venture is essentially into uh, handicrafts and toys, again, coming from Indian roots, Indian designs, Indian you know, artisans and local businesses. Uh, so, so my question here is uh, uh, around prioritizing brand branding. When you gave some phenomenal ideas and when listening to them, I was contemplating that as a starter, there is a crunch uh, in terms of both bandwidth and resources in terms of prioritizing between you know must haves and good to haves so are there really any pointers and sequence for branding which are like non negotiable and must have to start with and then later on with maturity uh, probably all of these points could be addressed uh, ruchi that's a great question um you know i'm just going to put in the chat something uh, uh that is somewhat related and then i'll relate and come directly to your question Sure, thank you. Just one second. Yeah, now I just want to ask, uh, I hope there are some, uh, there are some uh, football players or people who watch football over here. Um, so maybe on the chat, you can tell me, you know, in the football team, there's a goalkeeper. Um, there are uh, defenders, there are midfielders, and there are strikers or forwards. Yeah. So goalkeeper, defender, I can see Zaid is nodding. So Zaid is clearly a football player. Uh, goalkeeper, Defender, midfielder, forward. Who's the most important? Purvi, thank you for noticing the lovely bird calls. Okay, who's all? Goalkeeper, all of them. Manager, perfect, Zaid. That's it. The midfield. The team is important. Okay, perfect. It's a synergy, says Dr. Anand. Yeah, and, and you know, so this is the, the first thing I would say. Uh, to, to answer your question, Ruchi, is I just put down something if people can just see. You know, at Nicobar, we have built Nicobar by saying every single player is important, as Sandeep says, right? So there's design is the first. But after you create great product, you've got to be able to storytell that really way. And after you decide to do it storytelling well, you've got to create great online and offline experiences, and our, which is our retail store, which is our website. And that can only happen if you have a great operations backbone. So if the customer keeps coming to your store and you're always sold out or you have the wrong size or when they come to return something, you don't know how to run the process, right? It's going to destroy it. And so the reason I say that as a backdrop to Ruchi's question is, look, Ruchi, it's almost like riding a cycle where, you know, you'll go off balance at one point and to come back by pressing on a lever for something else, right? And so um, in brand building, the most important thing is being clear of your why. Why do you exist? I think don't start anything till you're absolutely clear on the why. Okay. Um, then obviously you need to have a visual identity, but do not stop at just the visual identity. Try and develop the whole library or at least the initial part of the library for your brand. So for example, at Nicobar, luckily we just knew that nature is all for us. And so our visual library had palm trees, had elephants, had parrots, right? So it was not the logo itself, but it was that extended visual identity that is your marker on what makes you unique. And then I don't think Nicobar could have been built without social media without Instagram specifically. So you choose what is going to be your main storytelling communication vehicle. It could be Instagram, it could be newsletter, it could be something else. So I'd say that these three, you know, starting with the why, you know, a memorable 
uh, identity and really uh, uh, a memorable identity with a visual library. And then the storytelling, that's where it gets the most interesting, but if you can focus on, I would say one channel in the beginning instead and doing it really well, instead of spreading yourself too thin early on, I think that can make a difference. Yeah, Rishi, do you want to ask a follow-on or is that, you're on mute. Ria, I think Ruchi yeah. is still on mute. Yeah, I have unmuted her, but she's not able to. Ruchi, I think she's still yeah, Now I can speak, yeah. Thank you so much, Oral. That helps, that, that gives a great direction to start with. I think my takeaway would be. Best. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So, uh, Rahul, I have a few questions. Like we had prepared one slide that we can uh, probably go ahead with. And, you know, these are the questions which really help everyone in the session to, you know, uh, understand what uh, is Nicobar and what's the Nicobar's journey and, you know, more related to brand development and everything. So I'll just share my screen and present those questions here. Hello. Yeah, Ria, for some reason I could not hear you, but I think you're going to present some questions on screen. Yes, yes, yes. I'll just do it once. Okay, let's do this. Before we get to these questions, Ria, while you're putting up, let's take a two minute break where everybody can just stretch. It's 11.42, let's take a break for two minutes and, and then we'll come back, yeah? Yeah, sure. So everybody can stretch, take some nice breaths and we'll come back. So everyone, we are taking a two minutes break. So let's be back after two minutes and then we'll start with the questions. So, thank you. Okay, Ria, I am back. So whenever you want to start again. 
Yeah, hi, Rao. Yes, just I'm putting up the slide. Just give me one minute. And, and I just want to say, I know we've been going for, I think, uh, one hour, 15 minutes. Uh, and anybody who is bored or has other things to do, please feel free to drop off. Don't feel obligated to stay for the whole thing. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. So I have these questions. So I wanted to just go ahead and maybe, you know, start with them. Okay. Great. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I'll start with the first question. So I'll just also read out to you uh, so that you know everyone also can hear and see on the screen as well. Yeah, so perfect. At the point of creating a brand personality and culture, but something we really struggle with this is building a team that believes in the same values and help us exclude that. So what are the best ways to find people who believe in the same? Um, you know, um, look, uh, the first thing is I just feel like one has to start with the view that, you know, there are different ways of building a brand. As I said, I know one way. And for me, you know, at least having a year's worth of capital is needed. So there are so many people I admire who are able to start with less, but I don't know how they do it. Um, so I think the first thing is to make sure that you've got some capital to start. It just makes life a little easier. And it does help in it does help in uh, in 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 getting others on board also. That said, you know, as I gave you my example, I met two hundred and fifty people before finding the first nine people, and of the first nine people, six are still with me uh, five years later. Um, and and I think you look for two things, right? You always look for values, and then you look for technical competence. And, and so you need to articulate what kind of values do you want the team to embody? And for Nicobar, you know, we were looking for people who are on this mindful journey. You know, we are we were looking for people who believed in design. Um, we are looking for people who, you know, believe that work should be a place for personal and professional growth, not just professional growth, right? Um, we wanted people who are mentorial, you know, for us authentic. So first is um, knowing what your culture stands for and then being able to hire people who match that. So now how do you find out? And so then the questions that you ask in the interviews start getting mapped to your values. So, you know, I'd ask people, do you meditate? What do you think of meditation? Um, I'd ask them what their favorite brand was. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd throw in some sustainable brands and ask them what they thought about it. And all the time, I was just trying to find out how did their responses match the values. Uh, that's, uh, that's, you know, and I think you will find it. I think it is really first knowing yourself uh, and then... Uh, asking the questions to match that. And then on the technical side, I always have, you know, an assignment to give them and, and an assignment that they cannot do immediately on the spot, but actually requires some time to do, which shows me how committed they are to actually wanting the role. And so, you know, that's my advice is look at the values and look at the technical, you know, so for example, on the website, I would tell them, you know, come back with a critique of our website if I'm hiring someone for digital. Come back with A, a critique of our website. Tell us what we can do better. Tell us what you think is resonating with the guest. Third, tell me three brands that we should be studying who are amazing with their digital experiences. For someone on retail, I would say, go be a mystery shopper in our store and tell me three different stores you have to visit in the city or two stores, whatever and come back with some feedback on that. Uh, you know, sometimes I would tell someone, just call into our customer service and evaluate my customer service. Team. And so I think that, that those are some of the ways that we hire. Okay. So that's really good to know. And I would like to go for the second question. Uh, how has technology and social media contributed to the overall growth of Nicobar? 
you know, as you remember, I said on the on the first level, Nicobar is a lifestyle brand, but really we are a brand who's crazy about digital and design. And so, um, uh, you know, I don't believe that anybody can exist today without understanding technology. You know, I think of the six, seven billion people on the planet, there are 50 million people who are effectively deciding because of their coding skills, the course for a lot of us. So I would highly encourage people to really get into technology and understand it. Um, and, uh, uh, and the way I do it is I, I find that I'm, uh, I'm 51 years old. So I find that I think everybody needs mentor and a mentee. And, and so I always try and look for some younger kids who can teach me. And so every Sunday, I have a two-hour session from 11.30 to 1.30 with two young kids. And we're always, they're helping me with a Facebook marketing course. Uh, right now, we're, we're, we're doing something on Shopify. Um, so they are helping me uh, with, with things on Shopify and plugins. So my recommendation is always find, you know, in your circle, find two people, three people, who are just amazing with technology and, and surround yourselves and be learn, learn from them. In terms of social media, Nicobar could not have grown without, could not have been created without Instagram. It would have been far too expensive. And, uh, and so I would say that uh, there are lots of things we all don't like about social media. Highly recommend the movie Social Dilemma, uh, the documentary. Uh, that said, Instagram has been absolutely critical for our growth. That's very good. And how did you understand the fashion aspect of the brand being from a business background? Oh, uh, luckily, uh, uh, you know, the co-founders at Nicobar, uh, the whole design team uh, is very, very special. And I just want to recognize them here. Um, Rajiv Purohit came from um, Ralph Lauren in New York. Uh, uh, he spent about 14, 15 years in New York. He now heads our home. Uh, Arya Nerkar heads our home with Rajiv. And she was um, uh, at uh, uh, Rhode Island School of Design. Um, Aparna Chandra heads our clothing, has been a very good friend of my wife's for the last 25 years. Um, and then Divya uh, Kapoor heads our travel. And, and we're great friends. Um, but one thing they've told me is, Rahul, you can, you can make a lot of decisions at, at, at Nicobar, but you don't make a single design decision. You can give us your inputs, but don't make a single design decision. And that has been the secret to Nicobar. I have never made a design decision at Nicobar. That said, I have some ambition for creating more of a men's line and, uh, and uh, we'll see where that goes, where my design journey goes. But I say that in jest, but again, it comes back to what my son told me, knowing myself is the most important thing. And I knew that with Simran there, uh, she is the most amazing person when it comes to creativity and, and how she has worked with the design team. And all four of our design team members have been there from the beginning. And I, I think that's very rare to see. And it's truly a team performing at its best. So uh, I learn a lot. I mean, I read things like the business of fashion. I, I, I attend sessions like this. So I'm very curious. Um, but I know it is not my strength. Uh, I think I'm very creative, but that does not mean I can design clothes or design home products. And so I would say the answer to that question is, you know, play to your strength and complement your weaknesses. Okay, that's really good to know, Rahul. And how to find manufacturer have a clear idea about starting a fashion brand from scratch? Look, it's not easy, right? Again, it always comes down. I can tell you that, you know, we have a partner. His name is Sunil. Um, he's been with us from day one. We have again become friends. I think with all these things as an entrepreneur, you're first selling a dream. You know, you're selling your values, you're selling your dream. You've got to find people who believe in that and who support you, right, for the long term. 
and so I don't have a. It's a not. I can tell you, it's not easy for us. Uh, but Sunil, for example, is one of the people who actually just stayed with us from the beginning. And um, and so I think the answer to that question is, you know, find people in the manufacturing space who share your values. I can't emphasize this enough. You know, the more you can find people who share your values, the easier life becomes. Makes sense, yes. Um, so the next question is the already we have asked that before. Uh, also, you must have faced a lot of challenges, you know, while starting this brand and, you know, a lot of difficulties. So what were those difficulties you have faced and what's been the highlight in your journey? You know, um, it's, um, I would say that the, the, look, the difficulties, um, I have a problem with the word difficulties, but I will answer the question. I believe that every person and every circumstance is in your life for a reason. And, and, uh, and therefore, you know, one has to just look at the difficulty as what is the learning in it? Um, you know, a great philosopher from India, Krishnamurti said, the secret to my happiness is I don't care what happens. And what he meant there is that ability to take everything in his stride. And it sounds, it sounds very philosophic, philosophical, it sounds very esoteric, but I highly recommend stay with this thought. If there's one takeaway from today, it really is, can you reach that point in your life when you really don't care what happens? And that doesn't mean you don't care. You actually deeply care, but it doesn't affect you. Um, and, uh, and so I'll talk about some of the things. Um, you know, we were about to sign a lease in Khan Market to start and launch. We're a Delhi based brand. Um, this is now back four and a half years ago. And we had agreed all the terms. It was going to be our first store in March 2016. And, uh, and after looking for three months, we found this place uh, in January and, uh, <clears throat> or in December. And at the last minute, he backed out because somebody gave him a better offer after having agreed with us. And, uh, and uh, you know, being a Delhi brand, suddenly three months to launch, we don't have a store. Clothes have started coming in. It was a big setback. And, and, and we were looking for a store in Bombay also as our second store. I happened to be in Bombay the day that we got this news. The next day, we got a location in Bombay and we just said, okay, we'll start in Bombay. And we started in Kalagoda. And I think in a certain sense, Bombay is an even better market for Nicobar than, than, than Delhi. We don't know, we don't do enough for winter. So we got lucky, you know, so I think retail locations is always a tough thing. The thing that I struggle with is also my source of joy, which is HR. And, uh, and, and, I, and I think, you know, we've had some people leave Nicobar um, I now believe that having a great alumni network is a great sign of an organization and people have to come and go, but it still hurts. You know, some of my closest friends may have left Nicobar um, and yet we remain friends. Uh, everybody has their own journey, but as an entrepreneur, I think the toughest thing is when you truly believe in someone, when you literally give your life for them, you nurture them and then they decide to leave. It's not easy to handle. Of course, I've become better at it. But for me, I believe I invest in the top 1% in this country in terms of our people in how much we care. And so, so I would say that still is, is one of my biggest difficulties is, uh, is dealing with you know, people leaving. But I think I'm becoming better at it. Okay. So... Uh... There's one more question, like Nicobar is known to invest in very unique ways to engage with customers and retain them. Can you maybe share a few corroborative instances? You know, look, um, uh, typically we collaborate with people who ha may happen to be our customers, but, uh, you know, the latest collaboration is with an organization that I admire a, may a lot. Asian Paints. I do feel like they're one of the great brands in this country. It's an incredibly well-run organization. If you're studying culture, I mean, that's an organization worth studying. How have they maintained this kind of a 
market share and lead for so long. Um, so we're doing a wallpaper collaboration with them. And that's because they came to us and said, this year, the theme is the moon. And we know Nicobar is obsessed with the moon. So again, there was a values match over there. And that's why we did this Luna collection with them. You know, with Airbnb, we created experiences. So you could come for four hours, you know, meet the design team, meet the founders, you know, see the design process in action, uh, you know, have a styling session. So that's another example of a, of a collaboration that we've done. Um, you know, with World Wildlife Fund, we did another one to save the marine life of the Nicobar Islands. Again, a values match. So I'd say the common thread over here is, uh, is really just having a values match with who you're doing. We're now launching something with Bira, the beer, again, an interesting Indian brand uh, that has the potential to go global. global. Um, and, uh, and so that's... Uh, um, um, <laughs> I, I invited uh, I invited our team also someone to join and one of my favorite okay. people on the is on the call and hearing me talk about our team she says Raul you're being an inspiration and true leader for all of us people might leave and come back again what matters mm -hmm. most the values which we don't let any situation hamper our island values and and you see that you know and and this is Santosh who's just amazing who represents our culture um, and uh, and all I'd say is, you know, I think just being authentic. Um, so I, I hope I answered the question of collaboration. What I will tell you is as soon as we went into lockdown, um, we decided to connect with our customers over Zoom. And we invited groups of 20 customers and we had a one-hour session with them where we just heard from them, learned from them. And we actually broke them out into breakout rooms we asked them, what do they love about Nicobar? What are two things we can do better? And then we picked one theme, which is what do you think about gifting from Nicobar? Or what do you think about travel? Or do you prefer shopping online or offline? So we take one topic and really go deep into it with our customers. So that's another way that we collaborated with our customers. Okay. So, uh, so we have the next question on the slide. Uh, brand building, it's more related to brand development and building. So it's also about ensuring quality. Could you briefly talk about what measures your brand took to ensure about uh, the quality about their fabric and other things? You know, I, I just, uh, I will answer that in one second. I'm just putting on the chat that everybody who wants to write to me can just put in, uh, I, I, I'm not very good with emails, uh, but you know, there have been people who wanted to manufacture with us. There are people who want to join Nicobar. There are people who just want some advice as a founder. Uh, so I'm just going to have you write to me at uh, care at nicobar.com. And in the subject line, uh, you can just put uh, uh, Shopify did you grad Raul Rai in Yeah, if you just put that, uh, then then I'll just collate all the responses and try and respond to people. Yeah, so if you just put that in the subject line, then we'll at least be able to uh, to reduce the uh, to make sure that I'm able to see it. Yeah, did everyone get that? If you can just respond on the chat, uh, those who wanted, because I saw I cannot keep up with uh, the number of perfect. I think everyone got it. So. So just be patient and uh, uh, and if you just send something and try and keep your email short, it'll be easier for me to respond. Thank you. Okay, so next question, Ria, you said about brand building? Yeah. yeah. Look, uh, you know, uh, I can say all the things that everyone is supposed to say that we made it the number one priority in the organization, et cetera. But really, I think it comes from someone deeply, deeply caring. And... Uh, and not just because it's going to be a revenue success, but just because they think it's the right thing to do. And I think our design team cares deeply about quality. So the first thing is, you know, identify who is that person who cares deeply about quality, right? And so for us, I would say Aparna Chandra and um, uh, our head of design and clothing and Simran Lal have been amazing at just making sure quality is the most important. Second, you know, read every customer care email. You will know when things are going wrong. 
So Santosh, who's on this call, is part of a consumer experience project that I chair. And the first thing I do is on the weekend is I read all the emails that have come in from customer care. Um, that's when you'll really know. Because I have a view that once you have your awareness on something, it automatically will start improving. The third is, uh, uh, is you know, quality should report to the CEO. And this is a mistake that I made just because I did not have enough bandwidth uh, and I didn't feel qualified enough to do it, but I think that that, that quality should be reporting directly uh, to the CEO. And that's an organization change that, uh, that we are introducing. Um, and then the fourth is just, you know, nonstop audit checks and surprises. Uh, you have to do that. Okay. Thank you that. Thank you for that, Raul. Uh, Nicobar is also known to build a two omni-channel experience. So, so to start with, for a homegrown brand with limited capital, is it possible to pursue online channel only? Look, everything is possible. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, I was, I'm with my father-in-law in the Maldives. And I told him that, uh, you know, COVID has been really interesting because it opened up my imagination. And, uh, and now the whole world also knows that we can all work from anywhere. And he said, it's not because of COVID, it was always possible, right? And so I think sometimes we just get limited with, with our own imagination, right? And, uh, and so look, it's absolutely possible. In fact, I would say many, many more brands have done it more successfully with only an online channel. I think for Nicobar, you know, our, our purpose is what I call, we are a human centered digital brand. And, and so for us, that human connect is really important. And so we wanted to have a store experience just because it matched with our philosophy first and foremost. But it turns out that it's been the most amazing thing because I think the more premium you are, um, the more you need to have an offline presence uh, the more you're trying to raise your perceived value, uh, the more important it is to have that offline presence so that people can touch, feel, smell, hear. I also think it's a great way to get to know your guest. So, so I think, you know, truly customer research experience really gets done in an offline way. That said, it's possible to do online uh, only, of course. Um, so when I started Nicobar, I said in, in year one, 90% of our sales will be offline and 10% online. You know, by year five, it should be 50-50. And by year 10, it should be 90% online and 10% offline. And so we're kind of there now. More than 50% of our revenue comes from uh, online today. Okay. So also one more question about the innovation. Like if I bring any innovation in my brand, then they will also copy that idea in a very less time. So how do really we make our uh, you know, brand very unique? Okay. Uh, so here's what I'm going to just put down in the chat because I think this is a really important concept. Okay. And I just put down three words over there, product, experience, and meaning. Yeah. And so my view has been that if we compete only at the product level, then you will be copied and someone will do it cheaper than you. And there are, now we laugh about it, but there are lots of brands who just copy us so much so that some brands have even taken our images from our website and put it onto their website. Um, and so if you compete at the product level only, you will be copied. Uh, therefore, you've got to start trying to compete at the experience level. And, and that experience of walking into a store, meeting Santosh, having her be the brand ambassador, telling you about Nicobar, when you have a problem with customer service, how we respond, you know, are we able to recommend the right gift for you? You know, if you chose to buy the Shillong jammies, are we able to suggest something for you? No. Are we able to add value through styling, through gifting? Now we're suddenly competing at the experience level. 
and not just at the product level. That is much more difficult to copy. If ultimately we compete at the meaning level, because you're buying Nicobar, because you know that we are an authentic, or you believe that we are an authentic brand that stands for Indianness, that stands for sustainability, that that stands for trying to create this culture of India in a global world, then it becomes very, very difficult to compete with that. So I think the innovation at a product level is easiest to copy, tougher to copy at the experience level and very tough to copy at the meaning level. Okay. So uh, also a lot of people who are starting the brand, they are like the students. So how much is it advisable for opening a new brand at student level? Uh, sorry, say that again. So, if a lot of people who are starting a brand, they may be like you know the students from fashion industry already. So, how will it be advisable for opening a brand if they are a student and they want to you know just pass out after college and start a brand? Look again. I think it all depends on what my son Raga said. You know, search inside yourself. If you are ready at age 18, 17, 16 to take a lot of knocks, if you feel you have, um, you know. Uh, people around you who will support you, you know, of course do it. I mean, you know, I know uh, All Your Rooms was started by uh, Ritesh, who's, I think he was 16 or something when he started this. You know, Bill Gates started Microsoft when he was, he dropped out of college to start it. So did Zuckerberg. So, you know, uh, but, but they were, you know, they had a brilliant idea. They were tenacious, you know, so there's nothing, I look, I started Nicobar when I was, I think, 45. Uh, I think there are more people who started in their 20s. Um, so I don't think I don't think it's about the school. It's about are you ready for it? Have you? You can't think through everything, but are you prepared for the ups and downs? Do you have some capital to survive? Do you have some good people around you? Do you have a unique idea? I think these are the basic questions. Okay, so I think age is just a number. It's just your passion and determination to you know start a brand and absolutely like that. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you so much, Raul, for answering all these questions because that's really important for the audience to also understand your point of view, you know, for uh, how to build a brand and also how the Nicobar journey has been till now. I, I think uh, I will also take some questions from the audience. We have a lot of them in the chat box, yeah. so. You know, maybe maybe before we take audience, uh, yeah. you know, we, it's it's really lovely that we've had almost 500, 600 people on this. If we can just take two minutes and people can now maybe reflect, because I think reflection is a really important point, you know, yeah. and give me some feedback on, on just what have worked for you in this session? What can we do better? I think if we just spend two minutes, it's now 12, 13, on, it's now, it's 12, 43. So maybe for three minutes, I would love some feedback on what has worked well and what we can improve over here. Yeah, okay. Mamta would have liked a little more insights. Uh, Amaya liked the insights on building a brand. Okay, some year over year data. I mean, you can ask that question, Bidhi. I don't know. We, we can definitely get to you. I think bio Y data. More knowledge around marketing, service oriented brands. I think every brand has to be service oriented, by the way. More on Instagram ads. I think the interactivity seems to have worked. Great. Okay, that's good to hear that the session was better than some classes uh, in college. Um, Good, confidence that age is just a number, great. Okay. Okay, great. Ria, now you wanna open it up to questions? 
Yeah. And I think, uh, so we I think have, we have a uh, few people. Who... Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So we have few people who have raised hands. They want to pro ask. Oh my God. Problem. I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but yes, somebody, no. Unnati, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but Unnati is saying, a reminder of a businessman version of Jay Shetty. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. So, um, Niket, maybe you want to go first? Hello. Hi, Raul. Thank you. Thank you for, for a beautiful session. Am I audible enough? Absolutely, Niket. Yes. You're very clear. Great. Raul, uh, okay, because, uh, okay, so basically we are from Tripur and uh, we have been working with a lot of brands uh, and, and basically designers or as students who want to start new brand. Uh, Raul, what, what really is, is, is a question that we face quite often is finding the niche. So there, there's many times people try coming in, they say, okay, what kind of a gap do we find? We, we want to do something, we have an idea, but is there a gap out there or not? So what, what would be your take on that? that... Look, um... You know, we are very lucky. The other thing I didn't mention enough is we have a bunch of great advisors and Santosh Desai has been one of them. Um, and Nikki, just tell me your background so I can answer the question in that context. Uh, Raul, so we've actually been uh, consulting and actually working with a lot of people who are ideating who want to create a brand themselves. So we give them manufacturing support. Got it. Okay. Uh, look, you know, there are two ways to go about this. One is identifying a gap, and two is having an inner belief. And, and Nicobar uh, was an inner belief-led brand, right? And so we just felt that there is a certain way to live, and we weren't finding products that served the way we wanted to live. So, so and, and Santosh Desai gave us confidence to start as an inner belief-led brand, and we never did a single day of market research, right? Uh, and, and because if we did market research, maybe if we ask people, will you pay 600 rupees for a mug which has an elephant and palm trees on it? The answer may be, no, I can get that for 150 rupees. So um, I think, you know, if you have the confidence because you intuitively, like everything that people are feeling during COVID, it has forced all of us to reflect. I can tell you that my wife was on this journey six, seven, eight years ago. Um, and so there is that thing of listening to your inner voice. That said, I mean, if you do want to go down the route of market research, then I think rather than asking questions, the way to do it is to just immerse yourself in the consumer's life and don't take what is said, but observe, you know, and so, you know, observe how they live at home, observe whether there really is a need for this product, uh, uh, I think it's more about observation versus just question, asking questions. And that's why I used the example earlier where, you know, by, by hearing this person talk about needing a kurta for their father, you understood the real need was gifting. Um, you know, uh, by, by, you know, you would have picked up that uh, when, when people say, you know, I'm going off on a holiday and I want to wear, uh, I want some clothes for Mauritius. Then you suddenly realize, when you start hearing that a lot, then you realize that there's a need that people's lives have changed and there's more travel going on in people's lives. Of course, this is pre-COVID, right? But what I'm saying is there's always the unsaid versus the explicit answer. You know, So in that same question, if you ask the question, do you need clothes for travel? The answer is no. But when you hear people, you realize that people are looking for wardrobes for their travel. You know, that doesn't, uh, that is lightweight, easy to carry, that doesn't wrinkle and and, and so that's, that's the second part, inner belief or the second part is just observe people's lives to identify this niche. Don't ask a question on, do you need X, Y, Z? And then the third most important, I started my first slide was, you know, Nicobar is an organic forest, not a manicured garden, which is if you, list, if you launch and you listen to the consumer, you will evolve your product and service in the right direction, which I think is the most, most, most important. So after launching, we realized that we're a great brand for everyday gifting. And we're really, now gifting is almost 30% of our revenue, right? And we didn't know that at the start. You know, suddenly we have realized that people love accessorizing with Nicobar and jewelry is becoming a larger part of our collection. Um, so I think that organic nature of growing 
by constantly listening to the consumer after you have a product is as important as before. Does that answer your question, Nikhil? Um, I think, of course, it does. I mean, there's again one road, which is the organic road, and 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 as you said, following the belief, and and the other probably is the one where you want to do the research method, which is more theoretical and which is what the kids have been taught about. Yeah. So it's just uh, finding the balance with Raul, which I think you've really tried tried nailing it. Yeah, and uh, uh, and and I think you're right, Niket. It is it is that balance, you know, and just being aware of when are you acting out of inner belief and when are you acting out of market research. I don't think people spend enough time on the inner belief. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Raul. Yeah. We have a few more questions from the participants. So, Anita, you may like to go next. Anita? Okay, so we uh, have... Hello? Hello? Yeah, you able to hear me? Yeah, this is Anita from Mangalore. I have a question for him. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hi, Anita. Call me Rahul. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Rahul. Uh, I'm basically a branding researcher here in uh, National Institute of Technology. Uh, and I've been also your customer. Lovely. Yeah, so I would like to ask you, what uh, from this academic, uh, you know, community, you need uh, more research in terms of, you know, uh, these decor brands who are, uh, uh, you know, big on sustainability. What do you need us to research more? Are there any topics or, you know, trends that, are, that you need the academic community to look into more? Okay, let me, uh, let me answer that question by doing a little quiz on the chat first. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the, how many of you uh, believe in mindfulness and sustainability? Uh, okay, everyone does. Okay, can some people be who don't believe? Uh, Okay, let me ask the question again. Okay, there's one now. It's like oxygen. Okay. Okay. Believe in mindfulness, not sustainability. I really want to hear from you, Krish, on what do you see as the difference between mindfulness and sustainability? Because, and then I want to hear from Rohan. He mindfulness, no, but sustainability, yes. Okay, uh, can can Chris is Chris? Uh, can you give the mic to Chris? Uh, I'm very interested in this because this is something that we both we, we talk a lot about both mindfulness and sustainability at Nicobar, and I think the audience will find it useful. Chris, can you articulate either? Hi, sorry, this is Shreya. I've forgotten to change the name as, and okay. I'm sure well, as Chris. Yeah. Um, so I do believe in mindfulness. I do realize what we're doing, what um, um, what's really happening to the world with the kind of um, uh, actions that we are taking. And I am mindful about um, uh, curbing it at my own level, but I just feel sustainability comes at that cost, which may not be um, for everyone. Right. So... Um, even though it's uh, we are mindful in our own ways, if you're looking at the larger market, a mass or a mass pre, maybe even a bit of mass premium market, sustainability does not fit in. Got it. Lovely. Uh, I do want to ask Koshik. You have questions, but before your questions, uh, can you explain what your view of mindfulness is, Koshik? Hi guys, this is Kaushik. So basically mindfulness is being one with everything, right? Uh, understanding and loving everything around you. And uh, that's the only way you know how everything works. Yeah, okay. You know, the reason I asked this question and Anjali puts in a really good point that 
look mindfulness and sustainable consumption is limited only to the elite class and it's supply driven see look india is a big market right uh we have a billion customers i think for all of you there is enough mindful customers in india to justify your business uh you know very few businesses i don't know but in in i can tell you that you know it takes 50000 customers to be profitable if your customers are going to buy from you again and again so now do you, who on this call doesn't believe that india has at least 50000 mindful customers who you can reach and even if you you know maybe there are 1 million so look i i i am i'm in the minority when i say that I know that the business, if if customers buy from you again and again, with fifty thousand customers, you can be mindful. And I believe that there must be at least twenty times that, if not hundred, at least twenty, fifty times that. So, you know, I I'm not sure that one cannot. I believe that you can build mindful, sustainable businesses in India, and that there's enough people here. So the problem is not the the people; it is the product and the authenticity, uh, the design. the quality in my view right um and the reason i asked that question i forgot who asked the question i think it was anita anita i think the question to research is what is it that is stopping an audience over here everybody basically says they're mindful and sustainable what is it that is stopping people from buying or paying that little extra to buy products that are mindful and and sustainable is it that they're not they educated in the right way so so is it that brands are not educating them in the right way they're not doing the right things to raise the perceived value but to me that is a critical question if people are so skeptical i think there could be great research in in what stops someone who probably claims they are mindful or sustainable from actually investing because at the end of the day maybe that same person and i know people like this who choose to buy one mindful product instead of two products and so i i i fundamentally believe that you know economics is a part but there might be something else does that answer your question anita yeah tanvi i just want to be clear i'm not saying stop at 50000 customers i'm just saying the business can be profitable with that customer base and 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 i believe that that number can be much 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 larger so can i ask my question now sure so so basically we've started a hemp company so uh, since the company is so stigma driven in india and people think hemp is cannabis and they think that it just gets you high how do i go about and break the stigma and you know convince people that hemp is not bad but it has a lot of other benefits too except for the psychoactive element it has look i think that journey has already begun i mean i think there are a lot of brands that are actually using hemp you know yeah, we only to use hemp but we never found something that is uh, soft enough on the skin mm -hmm. uh we did find something from china but we didn't want to bring it in from china uh, we wanted a great source in india um and so i think that journey has already begun you know look you know it you know when nike produces ads or campaigns it's just stunning and and i think if nike did a campaign around him <laughs> people would start yeah, people would start believing him we are not you know honestly we keep putting it on the external world but i don't think we as brands are doing a good enough story are uh, telling the story in powerful emotionally connecting ways and uh, and of course you need some budgets to spread the message but i think far too many people spend too much time on 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 the distribution versus the content creation and being imaginative authentic thoughtful about the kind of content that is created okay so you're saying everything the stigma breaking is dependent on the content you provide to the customer it, you know stigma breaking is is changing the perceived value right yeah uh, it's changing the perceived value that's that's why i introduced that framework about which is borrowed from a professor at nyu professor scott galloway mm -hmm. and uh, and look while i'm while i and i keep talking about this concept about having mentors but being mentored you know last month i took a 3 week course on branding 
uh, with this professor online course, uh, Professor Scott Galloway. And, uh, and that's where this concept of the cost, price, and perceived value. So I do think that a lot of the questions over here are, you know, I think this may be a nice takeaway for everybody on the group. What are you doing in your brand to increase the perceived value? So at Nicobar, by opening in Khan Market, we raised our perceived value. By doing a pop-up at Kochi Biennale, we raised the pop-up, uh, our perceived value. By investing in tensile, bamboo, jute, uh, organic cotton, we raised perceived value. So, you know, I think this is a great question that founders can always ask. What am I doing in the business? What is my team doing in the business to raise perceived value? So we have uh, two more questions from, one is from Madhulina. What is the brand persona and the buyer persona of the brand Nicobar? I think, I think we talked about it right in the beginning. Uh, you, you know, look, if I had to, you know, I just think that the Nicobar person is on a journey. They love travel. You know, um, uh, what I found is it's often people who are, either in their second profession, searching for a little bit more meaning or about to change their profession. Uh, and even if it's not their profession, they always have something in their life that helps them slow down, whether it's gardening, yoga. Um, they're generally people who are trying to slow down in life and, and savor moments a little bit more. The Nicobar audience, because of our price point probably, is, is really uh, in their 30s. I would say 60% of our audience is between 30 and 50. 20% is below 30, 20% is above 50. Um, I think our fan following you know, is very high in design schools, in creative communities, but sometimes there is a, a price slash affordability problem. And uh, uh, um, but you know, more than anything else, I do believe we as a team kind of live this life. Um, and that's what I feel, you know, grateful every day um, to just be doing something that work and, and my personal life merge. I can tell you today, I, I went scuba diving with my son and all my gratitude was just for the life that we have. You know, imagine if I was selling tires or if I was selling, you know, chemicals or something, you know, here, I'm just living out my life through Nicobar. It's my platform for experimentation. How lucky am I that, you know, on a Saturday morning, I can interact with 500 bright young students. Um, so I think it's just, I, I come back to where I started, you know, brands are just personal journeys of, of the founding team. And, uh, and I'd say just the life that we aspire to live, we have our gaps. Um, but we, we try and live the brand. By the way, I do have to make a little plug for Royal Enfield here because amongst the greatest brands that exist, I believe is Royal Enfield. And, and it's a brand worth studying uh, for those of you interested in, in brand building uh, about how Royal Enfield has created a lifestyle around pure motorcycling uh, and just being out there and a motorcycle is not about getting from point A to point B. So we talked about adm admirable brands. I think for all you students of brand, you know, as you think about Indian brands going global, I'd say Royal Enfield is one to study. Thank you, Royal, for that answer. And we- oh, One second, Nivan, Nivan. Um, yeah. Uh, can, you, uh, can you put down your dad's name? Because he designed bikes at Royal Enfield Chennai. So it'll be nice if you share that. Yeah. Yeah. And feel good earth, Nicobar, Aisha. And there's a beautiful brand that my wife and her mother have created called Paro. So if you look at parogoodearth.com, again, I, I now try and say that, uh, uh, you know, in, in one, I'll just put it down over here. Um, you know, Good Earth is, I say, Heritage India. Nicobar is Contemporary India. And Paro Good Earth is, uh, is Spiritual India. Um, you know, and I'd, I'd love you to please follow us on Instagram. Uh, our handle is at Nico Journal. I know I'm making a plug, but 
the 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 point is that you've got to watch a brand evolve to truly understand it it doesn't happen in one session but now that i've given you some frameworks of how we think you know when you see our instagram you may see it from a different light that will help in your own brand building journey Maria? So, yeah. I do have to get to my kids, so maybe we can wrap up in five, 10 minutes. Yeah, sure. So, we'll just take a few more questions and uh, then we can wrap up. We have one question from Sudha. How Nikbar balances financial viability with brand connect, especially during collaborations? Are there any compromises or priorities? Uh, you know, look, I, I have to say we have been very privileged to have. Uh, uh, to have a long-term horizon and security of capital. Uh, that said, you know, every single day I try to run it as a startup. I don't take a salary. Um, uh, uh, you know, we are careful about our hiring decisions. Um, so look, these, I can tell you, uh, you know, we all look for certainty in life, but the real answer is to learn to live with ambiguity. And back to Krishnamurti, really accepting, I don't care what happens. Similarly, anybody who tells you the answer, there is an answer between you know, financial viability and, and brand building is wrong. You, know, you just have to find your own balance. Uh, it is uh, uh, depending on where you are, depending on your capital, you will make some choices. So... I just say that, you know, run no matter how much capital you have, run with a lean mentality. But I highly encourage you to think about how can you get a little more capital? It is a skill to get it. It is a skill worth developing as an entrepreneur. Um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so please, uh, uh, you know, think about getting early capital at least from friends, family, people who believe in your values, believe in your purpose. Or, or you know, look, what I did is I chose to work somewhere else and save some money before trying to launch something. So go learn somewhere, save some money somewhere else. And maybe that's another one. You know, look, I, uh, you know, a lot of you have asked me for, I, you know, I love interacting with students. I'm absolutely happy you know, my purpose in life is to dedicate one hour a day to help others. And, and so I'm absolutely happy. I do apologize because I'm not very good on email. So please do write to me. Um, and ideally, if you can do it over the next 48 hours, that way I know to look at the emails over the next 48 hours uh, at care at Nicobar with Shopify DigiGrad, Rahul Rai in the, in the subject line. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to brainstorm with some of you. I'm happy to share what I know. Uh, and learn from all of you, yeah. Thank you, Rahul. So I think we can uh, take one more question. Yes, we have one from Harsh. Harsh, do you want to go ask a question? Rhea, you have unmuted me too. So I have a question if you okay, yeah, want, you can I can go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. So uh, Raul, I have a few questions that I'll quickly ask you. So I'm starting to, uh, I'm planning to start my small business next year through online medium. And I'm already like a data scientist in a bank. So my uh, life is already very hectic. So, and also I do not want to like uh, go and hire first. So I want to manage it myself. So uh, as a lone wolf, where should you think I should focus most? And then when should I do my first hire? And also while hiring, uh, should I look for talent or like a hardworking attitude? Um, uh, just one second. Uh, 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 should I look for talent? Or should I look for talent or hardworking attitude? 
yeah because sometimes i see like in my corporate life i see that some people are really talented but they do not want to work uh, like they are not very committed and like some people are medium talented but they have really commitment that whatever you ask them they will do it no matter what um look uh firstly i mean i'll just tell you this you know jack well from general electric had this framework if you can think think of a 2 by 2 on the x axis is let's say culture slash attitude and on the y axis is uh talent slash skill so obviously in the top right corner is people who are highly talented and who have a great attitude slash culture fit yeah those are what we call your stars and you should do everything to retain them on the bottom right are those who fit your culture are very hard working but may not be having the right skills they are the people you should look after and try and find them a different role which matches their skills better on the top on the bottom left is people who don't have the skill and who don't work very hard or don't fit your culture they you have to ask to leave a culture is built as much by people who you ask to leave and so you have to take that tough decision and something i'm terrible at uh, but really is the right answer and the ones on the top left are the confusing ones who have a lot of skill but may not match the culture unfortunately the right answer that i believe is if someone doesn't fit your culture ask them to leave no matter how good they are if you can't be able to work with them and so to your question you know i think it's priyashmita look especially as a founder you don't compromise on that you know you cannot hire anybody who's not in the top right i would say just wait just wait just wait you're not looking hard enough but your first 10 20 30 40 40 hires have to be in that top right corner at least you think they are in the top right corner you know we put too many conflicts about talent or hard work no no stop using the word or as an entrepreneur and start using the word and okay and uh, and especially in the beginning i can tell you the google founders they interviewed at least the first 1000 people they they hired and so again going back to my analogy on the coach you have to spend time don't compromise at this stage yeah and when do you think is the right time to hire like i was thinking i'll have some profit and then i'll have i already have capital because i'm already working but should i spend that capital to hire someone or i should try to do it as much as possible myself and then i when i my business is generating profit then i should start hiring and uh, like there's, we, yeah there's no right answer on this prashmita uh, it depends again as my son raghav said on knowing yourself you know the way i look at it is i look at when i hire someone i know that i'm hiring because that person is going to earn much more than the salary that i'm paying them in terms of bringing value to the company so it's a very personal decision as i said i think the greatest entrepreneurs found great talent early okay and and when you are managing it all by yourself like at the start then what is one thing you should really focus on uh like customer experience or what do you think or uh... i think it's all about customer experience you know i keep going back to you either focus on really listening to your customers you focus on your purpose the why of your existence you focus on the team that you're building and so it's the same thing that i've talked about it's actually quite simple the why of your existence listening to your customers you know making sure you're hiring the right kind of people making sure you're building the right kind of culture Okay okay thanks thanks Raul Thank you Raul um, so i think we can uh, like start with the end of the session here and also everyone before we conclude the webinar i would like to share a facebook community group where uh, you will have a lot of like minded entrepreneurs and uh, you know independent business owners so you can also like you know ask your questions and post it there i have shared the group uh, link in the chat box so you can ask the questions and we'll answer it them for you and also we would like to uh, request you to also fill up a feedback form for the session and provide us a feedback so that we are you know able to guide you better next time so i've shared the link for that also in the chat box and i will really thank you for this insightful session uh, it was great talking to you and getting all those insights about the 
brand building and also knowing uh, so many things about Nicobar as a brand, its journey. And uh, we would be uh, really happy that uh, you have answered all the questions from the audience as well. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll also like to thank everyone for attending the session today. And please do fill up the feedback form and also really appreciate being here. We will also have uh, the two sessions starting from tomorrow. Like we would have one session on digital and e-commerce and there would be a session in the evening for uh, from Shopify and Paytm team. So they will be also telling you how to build a store online. So please do also join us there in the upcoming sessions. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed today's presentation and the session as well. Yeah, Ria, maybe I can just say thank you to the whole audience. You know, uh, beyond just attending, I, I felt the audience was very participative. I think the questions were very thoughtful. And, uh, and so I really enjoyed it. The worst thing is being able to just talk to someone without the full interaction. So I just want to commend the audience for your curiosity, for your interaction. Second, I think it's amazing, Ria, you and the DigiGrad team are making these kinds of sessions available to... Um, to, uh, uh, to, to, to the student community. And, and finally, uh, you know, both Shopify and Paytm, I do want to say that I think Shopify is one of the greatest companies of our generation. Uh, do study them, study their philosophy. You know, as an entrepreneur, it's a great platform to get started with. Uh, Nicobar is in the process of migrating our site to Shopify. Um, and so, it truly, I think, I think just keep, you know, just look at how Shopify's vision has evolved. Look at the culture that they're part of. You know, Paytm also is an amazing story from India. It's in an incredibly competitive space, but I think try and find, you know, great, you'll obviously think of great brands, but also think of great entrepreneurs and their journeys. Uh, and I think both the Shopify and Paytm entrepreneurs are just some amazing people um, whom you should get to study a lot more about. So, you know, we are really looking forward to our migration on Shopify. And that's part of the reason we do, we do these sessions. Thank you so much, Rahul, for the insightful session. And also, I would like to thank our uh, other workshop partners, Shopify and Paytm, for, uh, you know, conducting this session and helping us organize this as a whole. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rahul, so much. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, I'm not responding to any of the messages I've got uh, directly, but please do write at that that uh, that session, care at nicobar.com with Shopify DigiGrad and uh, Rahul Rai, and I will try and get back to you. So I've not taken any notes from anybody asking questions here. I'll just await emails. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Rahul. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Have a lovely day, lovely weekend. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.